Continuing today on our Lord Blackwood series that King Dog Speed put together for me. A very, very awesome story so far, guys. I just finished the reaction. I gotta tell you, it's amazing. You are gonna hear some firsthand creepy stuff and it, it, it I, I can't go on enough about it guys this series is awesome i'm gonna have a link down in the description for the playlist that i'm using uh that that i'm putting together for this if you haven't watched it from the beginning you should go watch it lord blackwood is super fascinating i think you are gonna love it make sure to subscribe to the exploring series subscribe to me if you enjoy reactions let's do this lord blackwood in the city of amman iram Amman Iram, okay. The English naturalist well, and explorer, Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood, and Snail. has been to many <laughs> a strange locale, from other dimensions to other planets, and has been involved with plenty of strange adventures, including hunting a Tarasque and meeting both Bigfoot and fairies. Mm. It's not unreasonable to call him the greatest explorer to ever live. So when even Lord Blackwood flees from a location wishing never to return, you know that it's not a pleasant yeah, place. definitely, right? The short tale I'll be reading for you today concerns his visit to a paranatural city known mm. as Iman Iram. And it actually serves as a prelude to an SCP-001 proposal that further elucidates the city. Interesting. Let's dip our toes in then and begin. All right, I'm ready, baby. I love exploring series. July 12th, 1801. I have received the most peculiar gift today. Messer Brazo visited me today, simply appearing out of nowhere in front of my breakfast table okay. and pulling out a chair. After umpteen years of knowing Jacques, this is not altogether surprising, but the timing of the visit did inspire a measure of surprise in me. Though he refused to answer any questions, until Miss Cartwright served him a plate, the cad. Miss Cartwright is the house at my slightly offended prodding that his recent silence had come as a result of increased scrutiny on the value of Le Estate Noir by the first consul Bonaparte. Okay. Whether the frocks being poured into their archives were not better spent equipping the men on the front. Whether the objects in such archives could not be put to better use on the very same fronts. An officer communicating with an English noble during wartime would be a death knell for the organization. While I care little for mundane political squabbles, <laughs> I understand Jacques' position. My second question was regarding the large hay-packed crate that had appeared alongside mm. Jacques. Wiping his mouth from the pheasant, he explained it was a gift mm, and drew his cavalry saber to use the flat to pry off the top of the crate. Uh, so a we gift, both a present. peered in. A collection of six large, heavy stone tablets, each the size of my chest, packed with straw into neat rows. Is that the snail chest Using or a human strength, chest? <laughs> we were able to draw one out. It was papered in inscriptions and in an obtuse script that resembled Greek. Jacques explained over coffee sometime later. Hmm. Due to the increased scrutiny on the estate, he had taken it upon himself to personally ensure no potentially dangerous artifacts made it into the hands of the Warhawks in the French consulate. Okay. He had been surreptitiously smuggling such items out of catacombs and into the hands of well-informed friends of ours. Mm. I questioned what kind of danger a set of <laughs> tablets could carry. He elucidated. Some years ago, agents of the estate recovered a cache of technology impossibly advanced prostheses oh. from a shipwreck in the Aegean Sea. Interesting. With them had come this set of tablets, remarkably well-preserved in sealed jars. They apparently described a set of ancient cultures, the origins of the technology, and where to find their cities. Oh, so Deeply these weren't alien. intriguing, but the translations were ongoing in Paris. Okay. He promised to deliver the manuscripts as soon as they were complete. And so I await. Several weeks' worth of entries have been rendered illegible by moisture damage. Uh. August 23rd, 1801. Traveling with soldiers always makes for an entertaining trip, if nothing else. <laughs> Definitely. It's like sailors. When Brazil first provided me the completed <laughs> translations, I was slightly incredulous. 
the Arabia has been inhabited continuously for many centuries by a surprisingly cultured people. Surely, if a metropolis to this scale laid in the center of the area, someone would have found it. Yeah. But then, Unless it was the Black anomaly. Tower lies beneath London herself, and I was the first man in centuries to step through its doors. Oh, are they talking about... I suppose um, anything is possible. On London? I could tell Jacques would have preferred to go himself, but the good Frenchman urged me instead. With the tenuous political situation in the consulate, he could not afford to go on an expedition. Okay. So? Unfettered as I was by antiquated political rulings, he arranged for my passage with the Armée d'Orient as they moved into Egypt and Arabia. His pronunciation is so good about this. agreeing words. along. It has been some years since I had traveled to the warmth of the equator. Mm. And so here I remain, my detachment of just over two dozen sleeping in a distanced camp. At first, the soldiers were naturally suspicious of Englishmen, <laughs> especially in times like these. Mm -hmm. But we were all too weary to keep up such walls for long. A few days hanging out. Now, my two dozen men up. mingle with them Loose like brothers, up. conversing yeah. in a broken mixture of French and English. <laughs> They're all too willing to listen to our stories of the paranatural. The encore uh, trails and the sphinx hunts have become favorites. The officers, however, remain wary of the Englishmen with the strange tools and charms and stories of a world beyond. Mm. No matter. Tonight is the last night we bunk with the Armée. Tomorrow the marching plans take us as close as they ever will to the location transcribed on the tablets, less than a day's walk. Diverting the entire army is beyond even Messer Brazeau, so my detachment will say is our like goodbyes Monsieur? to our traveling companions and walk the distance. Wonder Tomorrow, if that's a different pronunciation. we see what truth there is to these legends of an Atlantis of the Sands. Hmm. Mysterious August city. 24th, 1801. Pardon my French, but... Bollocks. <laughs> August 24th, that's 1801. That's a curse, huh? Continue. Is that a real curse? Bollocks? I know This expanse use it, of sand is no different from the other really countless bad. expanses of sand we have traveled to arrive here. Empty, desolate, not even birds of prey ride these winds. Wow. It is dark, but even in the darkness, it is quite obvious there is nothing here resembling an Atlantis of the sands, resembling much of anything at all, in fact. Merely the, the rolling dunes. We have chosen to make camp. I write this by lantern light as the men eat and make merry. We will continue searching in the morning, but... The immediate signifiers are not reassuring. <laughs> August 25th, 1801. That's to be pretty frustrating for an explorer. My huh? predictions from last night ring Boring. true. We have combed every square meter of the location in the tablets, explicitly marked as the midpoint between the mountains and at an angle to a crevasse, which we located. By all possible measures, the city should be here. The men have come to the conclusion that we are indeed in the correct location, but at the incorrect elevation. So is it underground? Toying or... with his false eye <laughs> at supper time, Watterson posited that after 3,000 years, the strong wind patterns in the Arabian Peninsula would Very likely deep. have shifted large amounts of sand. That Amani makes sense. Ram may well be here, simply buried under countless tons of sand. Right. Not a reassuring notion, but better than it not existing at all right though the latter is just as likely digging is expensive though especially in Tomorrow, the desert we begin digging dang august That's a 26 hardcore job, 1801 man. digging in the desert waterson has vanished from the dig site the men sustain he was directing them one moment took a step away for a smoke and vanished from thin air so the city is we've invisible. searched up and down the area i fear the worst or is it from another dimension August 26th, 1801. Continue. I love this picture. Relief. We heard loud calls during a silent supper and raced out of the tent. Watterson? We found Watterson stumbling across the sand, out of his mind with thirst and sunstroke. Oh, gosh. We filled him with water and carried him back to camp. He's resting in a tent, and the surgeon says he will be fine in the morning. Thank goodness. Sun is Off far, his body dude. fell his own journal. 
the most recent entry, dated to today, being a hastily scribbled statement on how he had fallen into an ancient city in a space that seemed separate from the surrounding desert. So it is another dimension. This warrants investigation. Or a dimensional rift or something. Several pages of moisture damage. Hmm. August 27th, 1801. I have traveled up and down the earth, exploring the peaks and crevasses of our wondrous planet. The things I have seen have filled countless volumes and vaults in Britannia. I have encountered forgotten beasts, forsaken lands, and more than my fair share of ancient ruins. He must be a good dinner guest, I have guest, never huh? seen anything <laughs> like Iram. Oh, apparently he made it. Iram. Amman is, according to the tablets, a title akin to capital. Okay. Is an impressive sight by any mundane measure. Its walls outclass their Chinese rival in thickness and height, more battlements than blockade. The streets are wide and open, crisscrossing the city into a complex web of roads and avenues. The broadways are lined with what could have once been shops and merchant stalls. The towers... So is it ruins? By Jove, the towers stretch so far into the sky, one struggles to imagine how they could have been constructed. Right. The intricate stone and metalwork that covers every surface has the telltale imperfections of hand carving. But they did have the city itself is not stuff. in our world, not properly. It exists in a sort of pocket, accessible at random. So it is another dimension. I am as yet unsure what qualifies one for being able to access this pocket, but once a person is seen doing this, it appears all others around them are also capable of it. Ah. Most curious. So somebody finds it by accident, but the if you see it happen, you can truly do truly gargantuan, much larger than even London, and we have seen passages underground. I expect some sort of underground construction. Hmm. But it is impossible for us to explore the entirety, so we have chosen to make camp in one of the empty buildings for the night. Right. An air of... Excitement buzzes through the air as we eat and bed down. Ooh, man. Very cool. August 28th, 1801. Further exploration has indicated the city is perhaps not as utopian as first thought. Okay. The first task was to ascertain a rough map of the city. A large portion of it is, as we discovered, almost totally destroyed. Right, so it is ruins. Bombed out ruins, pitted streets, and dried out bones litter the paths. Scorch marks on the buildings complete the image. The section of the wall in this quarter is similarly broken through. I am of the opinion that this city did not fall apart. It was taken. It was taken. Hmm. Whatever battle did occur here, it was three millennia ago. And yet the bones look as clean and fresh as if they had been stripped, not yesterday. Mm. The men we sent into the passages quickly returned, with claims of strange vines and pods down below, uh -oh. in a labyrinth of iron and steel. Something's alive down there. These are hardened men who have explored with me many times, but... They seemed unnerved. <laughs> I will go down myself, but today was consumed by the making of the map. The city itself is approximately circular. A temple okay. complex dominates the center, and four broadways extending outward cut the arrangement into quarters. This is such an awesome piece Very of well too. designed for an era in which mathematics was only a loose concept. But there is a soberness. Hmm. The emptiness of this city is overwhelming. Not only have we seen no other people, we have not seen farms, plants, animals, anything remotely resembling life. The howl of the wind is the only sound one can hear, aside from his own boots against the stone. That's got to be unsettling. This effect is only intensified at night. Like liminal spaces, you know? As we settle down into our totally tents, deserted city. we do not speak. There is an unspeakable presence in the air. Uh-oh. August 29th, 1801. Ambience music is As so As I good turned too, to man. make my way back to the camp, I heard a soft pinging. 
the unmistakable sound of metal on stone. I raised my cane, only to see a small metal automaton, a child's toy, oh. staring back at me. A monkey that could fit into the palm of my hand, hanging from a pipe along a wall. Okay. It cocked its head at me. A moment of hesitation. So it's not... And then I reached out. I have no idea what it is. I've it's seen Automata, but this metal beast is intelligent, wow. capable of acting depending on the situation. It shows emotion. It plays when I play and hides when I shout. Is it a toy? Most fascinating. From the this technology? Is, no doubt, an example of the aforementioned uh -huh. advanced technology okay. that led us here. So it's not a being that I brought it to the camp that place. and the metal creepy too. similarly fascinated. So it's a kid's I toy, it's just this extremely advanced. Watching us was the source of the strange heaviness last night. The presence? A seasoned explorer can always tell when there are a pair of eyes on his back, mm -hmm. even when he cannot see them. It's a weird feeling to feel like I you're bunk, being watched. I hear it in the very farthest reaches of my hearing. Countless overlapping pitter patters of metal, metal on, stone. on stone. So there's a lot of them. We are far from alone. Hmm. August 30th, 1801. This is creepy, man. It's getting I creepy. I visited the temple today. It is a grand affair, like the stone-carved temples of the New World. Sandstone and limestone with great big murals fashioned out of overlapping plates of a strange bronze metal. They are incredibly stylized, but mm -hmm. seem to tell a story. Possibly a creation myth of savages, but I find it difficult to say. Wow. A massive statue of what could only be a god or king dominates the courtyard, hefting a spear and sword. Okay. His gaze seems to follow me throughout the temple. Hmm. If it is indeed a temple, the interior can only be described as a throne room. And what a throne, rivaling even King Edward's chair. Hmm. I hold my ear close, and I swear I can hear a slight ticking. Hmm. Standing in its presence is strange. Invasive. Invasive, I would say. Wow. I did not dwell, and I warned my men to do the same. Like paranormal, you know? I do not know what is within that throne, but every instinct in my body suggests I should leave it be. <laughs> Dude, August 31st, this is really creepy now. I descended into the passages today. Uh-oh. The men were right. This is where the plants and paws were? The silence were? above ground is doubled down below. Wow, it's quiet. Every movement and step against the metal sends an echoing clang through the structure, as if I were standing at the bottom of a canyon. I left a rope to mark my path. Before long, the maze became utterly impossible to navigate by memory. Dang, like caves. <laughs> Surely they would never intentionally create something this labyrinthine. Hmm. Or perhaps they had their own methods of mapping the path. Could be. Regardless, I am not bold enough to risk disorientation in no, pitch blackness absolutely not. and return quickly. But before I did, I stumbled upon the vines mentioned by the men. Petrified little things, snaking up and down the walls and falling to ash when touched with my blade. So they're petrified. The pods. Spherical things resting on the vines, the size of my chest, slightly throbbing. Oh. And the bones. Hundreds on hundreds, human and otherwise. So is this a defensive measure, skulls, this labyrinth? Femurs with bulbous growths, bones splitting into Y-shaped crosses, a chain of small bones four meters long, and countless human bones picked clean of all Maybe viscera. Maybe this was all to keep some people out knee deep of whatever is in the labyrinth. As, well, a bone. <laughs> they crunch underneath my boot. <laughs> These charnel houses start as jarringly as they stop. Entire passageways can be ossuaries, and other sections are all fine steel and rusted iron. Weird. I do not know what occurred here. 
or whatever it is. It's something horrible. It was something horrible. <laughs> it sounds like it, dude. Tomorrow we take our leave and go to our ship docked in the Levant to report back to the estate. Aman Iram is seductive, mm. but my own bones tell me that if I do not take my leave quickly, they will join their countless brethren under the streets. Most likely. And that's it. What a fascinating tale. First of all, the ambience of the music and the exploring series' voice telling this story was so effing good, man. I got the goosebumps. Um, so that labyrinth, like if I would want to keep somebody out of a treasure or something very valuable or whatever, why not make a maze littered with traps like a gauntlet, you know, um, to keep people out? That would be that would be the way to do it. But getting to getting back to like his all the senses that he thought about, like people say that your intuition, things that you can't really explain, your senses will tell you, that things beyond your senses will tell you when something's wrong, like something's really dangerous. And the feelings that he got from the entire place and the, the throne and stuff like that, those, those feelings of dread and, and, and caution, those are, like he said, a seasoned adventure, but you know, it's it's innate. Something within us can tell us when there's something that's seriously wrong and we need to stay away from it, you know? It's just, it's something embedded into our our uh, our, our DNA that we can, can can tell that, you know? Really, really cool. So, kind of like the way that uh, you can sense paranormal stuff, you know, or people claim to sense paranormal stuff. I don't know. This is so awesome, though. Again, King Dog's Feed, this lord blackwood series is 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 consuming me my man i love it i love it i love it i hope you guys do too we're gonna continue doing more of these make sure to subscribe to the exploring series and all of the creators that i always talk about these guys are amazing and subscribe to me if you enjoy reactions and check this video out if you enjoyed this one